everyone this is dr sanket pisat and this as promised is the case discussion of our case number 4 that we had posted in the group uh before we start our standard disclaimer that medicine is not an exact science no one knows everything and these are my personal opinions they may be different from published evidence or conventional teaching but if you have a debate or if you have an argument or a contrary in view to what is posted your views are most welcome please leave your views in the comment section below and we'll be happy to discuss them in the group and if you have an interesting case please send it to us on endogyny training at gmail.com with uh, so we'd love to hear from you uh, so coming to the question that we had posted a 30 year old asymptomatic patient with 2 years of in inability to conceive and the ultrasound showing a 5 cm right ovarian endometriotic cyst the left ovary is normal and the amh is 1.5 so of course these details do not exactly match with the patient that we operated upon but this is for the sake of discussion so coming to the four questions that we had asked for this particular ovary and the ovarian cyst what would you do cystectomy endometrium drainage or no surgery at all the second question was will her ovarian reserve reduce considerably after surgery third one would you advise a pre operative oocyte freezing and fourthly suppressive hormonal therapy like dinogest or gnrh agonist would it be given before surgery after surgery or not at all so let's see what majority of the people have said as regards the first answer what is the ideal treatment option uh, 82% people have gone with a cystectomy so removal of the cyst wall and i think my choice would also be cystectomy removal of the cyst wall because cystectomy is a more complete surgery it results in removal of the entire cyst wall and the rate of recurrence following a cystectomy is very less cyst drainage is something that i would not advise particularly important is cyst drainage in cases of patients who have got very low amh so 1.5 is borderline to low low amh yes i know but leaving the the cyst wall behind means that you will have a quick recurrence and in this patient at least the other ovary seems to be normal and the patient is not she is not very old in terms of her age so i would still go ahead with doing a cystectomy and not a cyst drainage but of course your opinion may vary as regards no surgery i would really not go with this option too much because in this case she's already had sufficient attempts at getting pregnant and there is an endometrioma obviously seen which is a localized disease in the pelvis not just of one ovary so with this endometrioma i would think that getting rid of the 5 cm endometrioma will enhance her chances of fertility and so definitely i would think that i would rather operate on this patient rather than leave her alone so with that let's go to the next question then will her ovarian reserve reduce considerably after surgery and you can see the um, the amazing thing that as a group we are divided so 84 people had replied and 50 50% is the exact division of people who say that her ovarian reserve will reduce considerably after surgery so as a community itself we are divided in our opinion that we give to our patients so if i had to choose whether her ovarian reserve will reduce considerably after surgery it would be very difficult for me to choose as well however i would probably choose on no because i would think that if the surgery is done properly and if the other ovary is still normal then probably the surgery would not have a very drastic effect on her ovarian reserve however again this is a case to case basis variation and it may also happen that the patient has a significant reduction in ovarian reserve after surgery and this is something that she has to give consent for and understand with an informed consent before we go in for the surgery itself then coming to the third question would you advise pre operative oocyte freezing again we are divided at around 50 50 and uh, this is something so for those of you who do not know there is now uh, a facility wherein you can have a oocyte where you can have an ovarian stimulation protocol done before the patient undergoes surgery 
and you can harvest the oocytes that are available and freeze the oocytes so that during surgery even if there is significant trauma to the ovary it does not cause her to lose her eggs completely and someone who could conceive with her own eggs would now not be pushed into going in for a donor oocyte program because of the iatrogenic trauma induced to the ovary. So if you ask me, yes, I would advise preoperative oocyte freezing. However, the uptake of preoperative oocyte freezing among patients, at least at present in my practice, seems to be less. Even if patients are offered, not many patients are keen and sometimes it may not be required as well. It is very difficult to predict who will have a massive loss of ovarian reserve. But at least I think our duty as medical practitioners is to offer the patients and tell them that there is this particular concept of uh, treatment and if they wish they can go for it at least that much information could be conveyed to the patient with adequate understanding and then it would be up to her whether or not to choose. Now coming to the last question hormonal therapy, Dynogest, GnRH agonist etc. So 50% have said that it is to be given after surgery. Uh, 15% have said that it is to be given before surgery and 34% have said that it is not needed at all. So if I were to choose one, my option, I would go with the 50% and I would probably give it after surgery. The reason for that is endometriosis is a disease not only of the macroscopic uh, deposits that are seen but also of micro invasion and no matter how good a surgery anyone does it is practically impossible to remove each and every bit of endometriosis this residual endometriosis that remains behind its progression can be delayed to a great extent by giving post-operative suppressive therapy like Dynogest or GnRH agonist. So personally, I would give the GnRH agonist after surgery. Giving the same treatment before surgery does not yield any specific uh, benefits unless you have a patient who is simply waiting for surgery due to some other condition like she being medically unfit, finances, etc. Otherwise, giving the GnRH agonist before surgery does not really yield in any significant reduction in the size of the endometrioma or reduction in the size of the deposits. And in cases where there is deep infiltrating endometriosis, there is a majority of the fibrous tissue component. So the hormone will actually not reach to the concerned tissue at all. So I would not want to give it before surgery. Uh, I would want to give it after surgery and I would not say that it is not needed completely because these micro deposits of endometriosis will grow at some point of time and we perfectly understand that even after starting the medication they may still grow but at least you can delay the progression of the endometriosis by giving these suppressive hormones and maybe then when you have down regulated the patient with GnRH agonist if she is a candidate for IVF she can directly go in for an IVF cycle with the down regulation having acted completely and then you can stimulate her with gonadotropins and probably then get a good result. So I think we've answered or dealt with all the four questions. Please leave your comments in the comment section below and uh, uh, please keep following us on the group to receive more updates about uh, this particular uh, topic. So also I would encourage you for those of you who have not already joined the group to join the endogyne training group. The link to join is put in the comment section below and is also on the website endogynetraining.com and uh, please also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you wish to keep receiving more such updates. I will be posting following this video immediately another video where the surgery of this same patient has been done and you can see the actual surgical steps that we have performed in order to do this surgery safely in which there is by those by that surgical technique you will find that there will be minimal loss of ovarian reserve so it will be a truly fertility sparing or a fertility enhancing surgery so i mean going to include the link to that particular video in the description box below and you will also find it on the channel so i think that's all that's it for this particular case see you in a couple of days with yet another case until then keep learning and do send us your queries on endogyne training at gmail.com Thank you for your patience and for listening.